And then once we did find a fundi, we had to show him, this is how you make the cob. Mm -hmm. But of course we needed his expertise to, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah. to the stuff that fundis <laughs> do. <laughs> Obviously yeah, I'm not the one that house. constructed so all of this. Yeah, so we just have the ideas and then we reshape it with the, with the proper measurements. With the Hi everyone. So in our last video that came out, a lot of questions came up. So today we're going to answer some of those. Yep. Yeah, we'll be talking about uh, some of the questions. Uh, you know, how is how was it like to be in our tiny house as we worked on our on our cob house? And uh, another question I think we'll be answering today is also, um, you know, uh, why did we choose cob? And 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 uh, you know, what is cob? We're going to be answering that too and also i think finally we'll be looking at the transition of uh, moving from a tiny house to a cob house which is uh, more spacious than a tiny house for sure mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you may or may not know if you've been following along with our other videos that for one year we've been living in a tiny home um, 224 square feet what you didn't know was that we were building our forever home which is a lot bigger than 224 square feet. So this was a really amazing experience um, for us and for our children to be a part of the building process from day one. Definitely, yeah. So I think uh, part of the reason we wanted to be so close to the construction itself is also to expose the kids to the whole process. To, in fact, to make them part of the process. Yep, so we would have um, yeah, every night we would come to the site and, you know, the kids would walk around and the dangerous work site. My daughter still calls our home the work site. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, it is such a good experience to expose them, to let them be involved, to put their imagination and, and prints into the construction of their home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think not every person and not every child especially gets to be a part of something like that. So to be able to see your home built from the foundation up and to be a part of it and to be able to have some say as to this is how I want my bedroom to look or we should have our, our homeschool room this certain way and to be able to walk into it when it's just a frame and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. again as the walls start to form and again as now we put the plaster, um, the kids loved it i think we loved it too of mm. course we were impatient the whole time to get in um but it was it was a very surreal experience i think we all learned a lot about patience and a lot just about Bryce how Bryce's you know to construct a home and and all that it takes it was such a good hey. learning opportunity for all of us what? and especially for our children like i know that this is something that they're going to remember for the rest of their lives and it's going to be a great memory you know being able to watch your house being built and and to be a part of that definitely yeah mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. it was it was I neat i mean um yeah just the the beauty of also just being in a small space together right and knowing uh, this is not our forever home. It? This is our, our, our way. This is where we are at right now. And we're going to be over there. <laughs> where is it? It's nothing right now. But then the strawberries come and then the digging happens. And then you know, they start playing and running around the, the foundation trenches. And this is our home. This is going to be a room. This is going to be, and there's nothing yet. So there was a wonderful life lesson there and of growth. Of, of things don't just happen of you know yeah i think our okay living in a tiny house we didn't have room for a lot of things and a lot of toys like i said it was 224 square feet and six of us so we didn't have room for much at all apart from a couple beds um so our children ended up usually playing on the piles of sand and the piles of stones that we bring in for construction. And we have endless videos and pictures of them up on sand piles and rock piles. And that mm -hmm. became their, their toys, playground, yeah. their playground. Yeah, and they absolutely loved it. And they miss having those sand piles now. Mm -hmm. um, so they were able to just even experience a different way of playing, which they loved. And for ourselves personally, I think it was an amazing experience for me to be in the same spot. I would come every night, you know. That's how you get ideas and, and you just 
keep plugging in, keep showing up and seeing, um, you know, how is this space going to be utilized in a different form and fashion and, and what if the hallway went this way, what if you have, we had so much input into the construction itself mm -hmm. because it gave me room for imagination, room for creativity and I think imagination and creativity comes with consistency and uh, of course patience but also with with more exposure, more, you know, you gotta touch and feel the yeah. texture and the, yeah. That's We're copying her bedroom. That's your bedroom, you're touching your bedroom wall, girl. Here's Nema's bedroom. Oh, I was just in there. We are doing this half today. Hopefully we're gonna get this done. This room, yeah, man. This Nema's bedroom. Nema's bedroom. These two sides are done. Nema approves. Do you approve, girl? Do you like it? Okay, so why did we want to build a Cobb house and what exactly is Cobb? Welcome to Blessview. Welcome to Blessview. Welcome to our homestead. Okay, so why did we want to build a Cobb house and what exactly is Cobb? Yep, uh, yeah, <laughs> so you, you make Cobb that makes a Cobb house. Uh, Cobb is a mixture of clay, sand, that is a uh, masonry sand or construction sand and uh, aggregate that is uh, straw some bits and pieces of whatever is found in your soil that has clay so yeah so a minimal content of clay and soil uh, and then you mix it up with uh, sand and uh, straw and that's how you make cob and then mm -hmm. you you use cob to make a cob house mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we actually built a straw bale mm -hmm. cob yeah, house point. yeah mm -hmm. Good, very good point. Yeah. So yeah. there's a few types of ways you can use cob. So you can make cob straight up, you can mix it up and pile it. So uh, uh, when we landed on the idea of cob, as, as Kim loves to remind me all the time, I grew up in a mud house, which is very true. <laughs> <laughs> so when we landed on it, uh, we landed on it uh, individually. She was mm -hmm. just researching her own stuff and then I landed on it on my own. And then it made so much sense when we, ch we talked about it. Because I really grew up in a mud house and um, so it made so much sense because we would put sticks and sticks and then step on sand, uh, mud house, and then step on sand mixed with water and make a mud house. So with cob you can do the same, you can have cob and pile it and pile it until you make a wall, then do the same and make walls, then you have a structure. It's a bit labor intensive, uh, but what we did was straw, you can also now st use straw bales, that is a bit faster to make the structure. You, you. Um, you use big as uh, the straw bales the same way you use um, construction uh, bricks or stones you pile them the same way mm -hmm. um, and then you have your wall then now you cover it with cob which is what we did is um it's a bit faster to have the structure and then there is another style called uh, straw light clay we use that too there's a few other structures of natural buildings so uh, but with cob specifically, they straw like clay, they cob itself, um, and then they straw bale, which we used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, but we tried all of them in our chicken coop. We used straw like clay, mm -hmm. the garage used straw bales, and then we loved straw bales. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we um, we had never done this before, like Henry said, we happened to come across of it across it individually mm -hmm. on our own. And Henry said, hey, I have this crazy idea. What if we build a house out of mud. cob, <laughs> out of mud? And I just happened to be researching the same thing. So it just kind of made sense. We thought, okay, this is what God wants us to do. But we had no idea how to make cob. We couldn't find anyone here in Kenya who knew how to make a cob home. Uh, so we started testing out our soil to see how much clay do we have in our soil. We started putting different ratios of the water and the straw and, and the the soil and this and that mm -hmm. um and like henry said we started building a lot of our structures mm -hmm. on our homestead with it we had chickens the dog house um yeah. the dog house the yeah dog we made house, the chicken yeah. coop the mm -hmm. duck house pretty mm -hmm. much all of the structures for the animals mm -hmm. we started building with the cob mix until we had figured out exactly the, the ratio perfect ratio made, yeah. so by the time we got to it's the time to build our home 
we knew the ratio and everyone's going to have a different ratio of how much mm -hmm. sand and how much soil you mm -hmm. need depending on the type of soil you have uh, on your land. The clay content land. in the soil, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the clay content has to be not more than, you know, preferably 25% or less. If, if on, on, a, on a conservative side, 30%, but 25% is most uh, recommended. So if you have too much clay on your soil, that's not good. It can lead to cracking. So you really need the perfect ratio of clay. So you're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and we even had our... We had our kids there helping us make, make the, the cob tests, mix yeah, the and tests, yeah. um, Zawadi especially loved it. She loves, even when we had the fundies here and all mm -hmm. the workers now building our house, she would always get in there and she'd have, you know, she'd be taking her socks and shoes off and say, Mom, I'm cobbing with the fundies and she'd be in there with the guys and mm -hmm. and she just loved it. Uh, it's actually quite therapeutic. So it's, <laughs> it's really nice. Play, yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah, so um, that leads to the why, though. Mm -hmm. That leads to the why because the health component. So once, yeah, once we learned about um, the the structure itself and the possibility of actually making a mud house, that is not semi permanent. Ours was just mm -hmm. semi permanent because every Christmas or every other Christmas we would have to retouch it, you know, get the cow dung or get more clay, make it prettier and stuff like that. But with the cob is different. You're using the natural materials, but you're making. To a standard of the to the standard definition of permanent building in in, in Kenya, especially is, you know, you have a, a stone house that's gonna last 25 to to 30 years, uh, even a wood house or um, the North American style. So, anyways, uh, with the cob, it's the same. If you do it right, if if you're patient enough to to get the work done the way it's supposed to to be done, with the proper training, research, and and whatever it's required. So once we learned of that. It was so exciting for us, but then now the health benefits of COP was another big thing for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the health benefits and it's, it's really a cozy joint to, 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 to be in, uh, in a tropical weather in Kenya. So it's, it's ideal for us, uh, but also it's just a beautiful thing for myself, knowing that my kids sleeping next to a wall, they're not breathing in chemicals, you know, and mm -hmm. paints and, and cement and just the natural component is not only good for the environment, uh, which we should be fighting for. Yeah, good for the environment, if you didn't catch that. <laughs> but also good for our family and our children's health. And, and uh, yeah, so that, that was a huge plus for us. Uh, yeah, on top of the possibility of it being able to be done, just benefiting and harvesting the, the health components to, to the cob was great. Mm -hmm. I think as homesteaders, natural living is very important to us so to find a natural building style that is permanent um, was something that we were so excited about um, and like Henry said the kids aren't breathing in chemicals we are doing our part to reduce you know our carbon footprint yep. on the earth um, and what I especially love um, is because our goal is to be self-sufficient one day and we're working towards that. This house was us being able to partly do that because yeah. all of the soil and all of the clay and all of the water that we collected from the rain, we got on our land. It was mm -hmm. materials that God provided for us. Mm -hmm. um, I love, you know, all around us are so many things that God has given us and it's great it's wonderful that we could use those to build ourselves a home. Yeah, home. So yeah. apart from having to buy, I guess, the sand and the straw, our house was largely built from the own soil right beneath our feet that we dug up ourselves mm -hmm. by hand. Totally, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of, of Cobb is yeah. um, the natural building is, is, is the possibility of, of being involved, no matter what you do for a living, with, with minimal to zero uh, knowledge or skill of construction, you can actually build yourself a house or be involved in a tangible way. So the latter was true about us. So we got really involved in a tangible way uh, from, uh, from designing to working with the, with the, with the, with the professionals around, uh, you know, uh, this is what I want. And, 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 uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did have a lot of you ask, um, where did you find a fundi who could build this house? And we did have a fundi, but he had no idea what cob no. was. 
um, we had actually done a lot of research on mainly YouTube, yeah. a lot of research, a lot, a lot, a lot. And then like we talked about a lot of now the testing at our, our house and testing it out as we built the chicken coop and the dog house and whatnot. Uh -huh. And then once we did find a fundi, we had to show him, this is how you make the cob. Uh -huh. But of course we needed his expertise to, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah. To the stuff that fundies do. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, I'm not the one that constructed house, yeah, all of this. <laughs> yeah, so we just have the ideas, and then we reshape it with the with the proper measurements, with the proper um, yeah. how do you need this to be to be strong enough, the architectural work and uh, the heavyweight stuff behind it. But then the materials, the ideas. You, we get to be involved in, and that mm -hmm. was that was really a blessing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if, yeah, even us, if there's actually. anything that um, needs to be repaired down the road, we don't call it. It's no. so easy. You don't need a fundi to come and repair anything in your house. You can mm -hmm. do it yourself. Yeah, we just get our little great. baby out to step on cob. Exactly, your kids <laughs> can do it. <laughs> <laughs> they can step on the cob yeah. and they fix it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so we worked with a local fundi um, who will learn how to do it. And I hope he can do it for himself and also for other guys, for sure. So that's kind of how we, we did ours. Uh, the, the last question, I think, the last question was, um, how was the transition? The transition from the tiny house uh, to the cop house, to the mud house. Mm -hmm. You want to go first? Or do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, it was obviously wonderful having a bigger space. We did not have space for a table in the tiny house. We did not have space for a couch, a cooking area, like absolutely nothing. We just had two beds. Like it was a very small space for six people. So but in the kitchenette. A little kitchenette, we'll call it a kitchenette. <laughs> um, so we now have a dining table where we can all sit and have meals together. Um, indoors, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, I have a counter where I can, an island actually, where I can prep, you know, my veggies and cut my onions and whatnot to cook on. And um, we have a homeschool room, finally, um, where we can do our studies inside. So And the books are not dusty. <laughs> and yeah, the books actually the have books a shelf outside. to go on. We had, uh, if you look at one of our <coughs> previous videos, I did a tour of our tiny house and we had our pots and pans stored inside our oven, stored under the bed. Um, we had school books just tucked into every little space. So it is so nice that everything has a space now. We've been able to get the kids some more clothes because they only had one tiny drawer each. So they had like, you know, five t-shirts, a couple sweaters, a couple pairs of pants, and that was it because we didn't have room for anything else. And there is definitely something very beautiful about living simply like that. And maybe we'll talk more about that later. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it has been really nice, especially it's rainy season right now in Kenya. And it's been wonderful being able to eat indoors when it rains and to do school indoors when it rains because we had to do everything outside. We had to eat outside when we lived in the tiny house. We had to do school outside. And this is rain or shine. So that did sometimes get challenging. So I think for me, especially as a mother who's um, doing a lot of the, you know, cooking and cleaning and, cooking, and caring yeah. for the children because he's gone at work, I'm at home. It's made my life a lot easier, of course, to have the bigger space. It's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, yeah, the transition was was different, it's nice mostly, but uh, also I think the kiddos really miss just being in that small space together, right? Like yeah. all the three of our our little ones uh, yeah. slept together and then the, the last one slept with us. But even today, today they still want to have sleepovers. They're uh, having a sleepover tonight. Even now, yeah. <laughs> so the, it, the, the, yeah. the closeness was, was good, but still hard to let go because now, you know, uh, our daughter always, she's next down the road, that down the hall from us, and she's always, last night she was, she was in our bed, so <laughs> there, there's that closeness that we're still figuring out how to navigate around it, which mm -hmm. is good and maybe bad, but it's, it's all good, so, um, but being in a, you know, sitting on the table or having a coffee inside and, or being in the same space, but you can disappear in that corner, is 
sometimes it's good if, if I'm on the phone back, back in the days you know if one kid is watching in the tiny house if some they're watching a movie on an iPad or on a phone you can't pick a call inside so uh, now with the rainy season it's just awesome to have that space mm -hmm. yeah so the transition has been not bittersweet but uh, more sweet than bitter <laughs> but also with this a little bit of reminders of why a tiny space is it's just man it just forces you to be close yeah forces yeah. you to be close yeah i find like our children they don't they rarely i'm gonna say they rarely fight with one another they get along so well like henry said because we are all forced to be in a very tiny space together all the time it forced us to get very close and to be patient with one another and a little more kind to one another and our children they love being together they always want to be in the exact same space and I don't think everyone is quite used to having more space yet I think one of the other big things is we really got used to being outside because we didn't have space to be inside we didn't even have a couch like if yeah. you wanted to take a rest just for a few minutes you'd have to go on your bed and and rest mm. there. So now, of course, we have a couch if you just want to sit down for a few minutes. Just sit up, yeah. Um, but we did get used to being outside. So like a even lot. today mm -hmm. when Henry got home from work, he found me cooking outside on the, the fire. Yeah. Um, the fire. And it had just yeah. finished raining. Actually, I started boiling meat in the rain. I could have cooked inside, but I think we really began to love just nature and being outside. Um, it's so peaceful to watch the sunset or um, you know watch someone let their sheep and goats graze you know at the next shamba it's, it's very peaceful to watch that work. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while you're cooking or you know eating outside I think I find that we're still outside a lot despite having this new beautiful home which we do love we find ourselves outdoors a lot still mm -hmm. cooking and eating and doing activities life, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm yeah so yeah so the transition is um yeah we 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 are not doing so much different uh so ma so much of different stuff that we couldn't do in the tiny house but uh but like the outdoor life is still a big part of what we do we are homesteaders so we're always outside but um yeah just having that space again when they say more is little or little is more i think sometimes yeah when you have less you 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 benefit more you you appreciate more you you take time with it more so mm -hmm. yeah so in that small space we 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 got to a point where you know we ha we learn how to communicate because there's no running it, it, it's <laughs> nighttime if if my son is loud or my daughter is loud i'm like hey, you gotta be quiet and all of a mm -hmm. sudden i start learning that the tone variations are helpful to get the goal done you know like here you can just yell out of spite because they're over there and now not in the tiny house so yeah so it was such a wonderful experience and i think for our family um for for our family especially for me let me not speak for everybody but for our family we try to to live in the truth of being children of god and one of the fundamental things we know is no matter where we are at as long as we have each other and we have god it will always be uh, okay, it's all good as long as we have our God, He's gonna hold us down. So something we actually used to say before we got a family was you plus me plus God equals to wow. And now it's you, all of us as a family, and me, each each member and me, or each member and you, right? You plus me plus God equals to wow. And in the tiny house, it was wow. And here it's mm. wow. No matter where we're at, as long as we got each other and we got God on, on our side, who is always gonna be on our side. So it's going to be wow. So yeah, I had to throw that in there. I hope I didn't preach, but hey, it's true. <laughs> what do you say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good? Yeah. All right. So that's it. Lisa. Thanks uh, Thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks um, for, for the questions. We will try to answer more of the questions and, you know, walk around. I'll walk you around uh, the, 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 the cop house. But it's possible. It's possible to live in a mad house. Yeah. And 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 uh, and just enjoy the bliss out of it, the bliss out of it. So, uh, especially for my African brothers or Kenyan brothers, you know, it doesn't. The beauty of COVID gives you options. There, there could be stone, there could be tin, there could be wood, and now there could be mud. Our grandparents grew up in mud houses. My mom grew up in a mud house. 
but that is considered poor. But it's an option that is not actually um, that bad. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I, really I think there's yeah. definitely kind of this warped idea, or at least I think so, mm -hmm. of you know what success is. So I think a lot of people think, well, if you're successful, now you build you a build stone, this kind of home, a stone yeah. home with cement. You know, you don't go back and build a mud house but actually there's something really wonderful about using natural materials the natural materials god has provided for you and really building a house with mud and with soil from your ground or working in the shamba to get your vegetables instead of buying them from the supermarket actually to me that is a much more rich life because you're living naturally you're providing healthier options for yourself and for your family, so yeah, as much as you can, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So thanks for watching. I'm, yeah. I'm super excited. Thanks. Uh, keep asking questions, and we will try our best to keep answering. Uh huh. So those are some we could tackle today. Uh -huh. Yeah. See you next time. All right. Thanks for watching.